uh, to be in breach too. So we've got follow this on people. So, um, so SIM, SIM SOC services, Secure Web Gateway, Endpoint Protection, um, that uses a unique auto containment technology. So I can demonstrate if you're interested. Are you looking yeah, for anything like that? Yeah, I'm interested. interested in, in the in, does the import protection, does that report back to you? What is that? You have to have something locally for to report back to, or is it report back to the cloud? We have a cloud based so kind of thing. Yeah. I'll give you the whole demo yeah, right now if you want to see. Check it out. Yeah, sure. I had, a, I had a talk going yesterday that, I can, you know, that I'm not going to be able to do today. So I'll just bring it over here and do it right here. Okay. So, um, actually, no, I can't do it. Right here. I got I to gotta go back and duplicate my desktop because I never get to see the network goes like it's supposed to. Well, I'm extending so that I can do a little work, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, it's probably not the best way for me to do really duplicate it now. So basically, your map shows attacks on. So the map that I was showing you there. Yeah. Uh, that we, you know, that's to bring people in, of course. Okay. But that's a detection story that was actually showing zero day detections. Okay. In our Valkyrie threat intelligence, it's a, well, it's a crowdsourced threat intelligence database. All right. And also, Valkyrie is also the advanced analysis and where we do advanced analysis. Okay. And so, to give you a quick brief on, on our endpoint and what's different about it, I'll say that there's three things I'm going to emphasize. One is it's a unique protection model. Um, second is that the management and the tools are integrated. So this doesn't take six weeks of professional services. It takes a couple of hours to move it up and move it up and So then the third thing is that our product is backed by humans. So in the end, it's more than just a product for product and service. I'll show you how this works. All right. So we're, I'm using ransomware a lot because you know ransomware is hitting everybody. Small guys, big guys, your customers, your the companies, the individuals, right? Right. And this is our our Kimono security client um, right here. Um, and you know when we think about ransomware, the story kind of sounds the same. Infected documents usually started, right? It, this is more than anything. It's a social engineering problem, right? Because at the end, it's getting someone to click on. You got me yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Your free thousand shares of restricted stock units. Click here. You yeah. need to enable macros. You need to. You need to let me hit the macro. Yes, 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 yes. Of course, I want my <laughs> restricted stock units, right? So the word document, ultimately, the story behind it, though, is that you got a macro, you got scripts, ultimately a file dropper. It's going to out to a URL and get a prepackaged malware sample, yeah. right? And for me to get this to drop on anybody's PC, I need to rehash it, right? So I, I change the hash so the signatures won't work, so nothing, right? right? And then it's got to be a pretty sophisticated piece of malware. So the piece that I clicked on, I shortcutted the process and just double clicked on that zero day malware. Okay. Well, we do have a lot of layers running here, not just auto containment, but that's the basic story. So antivirus is traditional, right? And don't tell me antivirus is dead because there's nothing faster than a local, right. you know it's bad and it's in your memory. Yeah. There's nothing faster than that. You're always trying to figure out good and bad as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. and from our perspective, if we don't figure out good or bad and it's called an unknown, mm -hmm. we're going to auto contain it. So technically, auto containment is a kernel based driver. Uh, a drive filter, mm -hmm. and then virtualization of the resources. So we're not using VMs or micro VMs or any of that stuff, which gets, there's a couple other companies that do containment, even Microsoft, uh, I would call them kind of dumb containers, because they, they end up containing a lot. I mean, yeah. you see almost everything. They do, they do. The giant office applications that we know are trusted. Right. Why are you containing that? How could that be good for you? How many instances of that can a regular PC run? Yeah. Now, the IT guys, they got the Xeon processors in 32 of your RAM, right? Mm -hmm. But the people on the floor, they don't have those kinds of machines. And of course. Put that software out there, you'll see that it messes them up. Right? Yeah. So this VM, by the way, which is part of my demo, is uh, just a four gig of RAM VM. Okay. Part of when I'm showing lightweight software, I do have 32 gig of RAM on this PC. <laughs> and it is a Xeon processor. Yeah. So running it natively on the PC is kind of unfair to show you. But this is you know pretty normal speed. Now, okay. What's being what's happening back there is we're getting a little word pad. Though. You see the little green order around it? Yeah. That's the visual indicator that auto containment has occurred. Okay. Now, we just talked about how WordPad's a trusted app, right? WordPad mm -hmm. shouldn't really be contained unless it's been initiated by an untrusted parent process. Okay. And that's what's going on here. So, unfortunately, a lot of malware is just doing damage to the stuff that's already on your PCs and trusting, right? So, so in this case, I'm showing you the active process list, and I can right click so and just show yeah, yeah, you on, show containment only to what's being contained. Of course, we're seeing a live ransom note come up right now. Now, huh. this other piece of, so a, an untrusted unknown, which I've rehashed, just like a hacker would, uh, and I did test, of course, to make sure that my signatures wouldn't detect it, because that makes for a bad demo. And in all <laughs> candor, 
this disappears so quickly when when some when any part of the software figures out it's bad, yeah. it just boom, and I got nothing but a log to show. Mm -hmm. So I have an exception for this location, so that nothing, so it won't disappear, and I can redo my demo over and over. Just right. you know, okay. but yeah. other than that, it's alive. It's got everything running, right? And uh, this, of course, is not doing damage. It's just a distraction note. Well, it was scanning my system and figuring out what damage it, I could do. And it's always good to think of my system as not a stock PC, but as intellectual property I'm trying to protect. Like, for instance, this picture of a koala, it's not a stock Microsoft photo. Oh, no. This is my intellectual property. I'm going to sell this to Getty Images later for $100,000 so I can get out of this racket. <laughs> so, so imagine that it's important for a moment, right? So my pictures right. are really important. Yep. But we see here a big ransom. I don't know if you've heard of MacTub, but this is live ransomware that I ran. Uh -huh. This network, wow, total. But the little green border gives me the warm and fuzzies. I know I can pack as long as I want. It says I've got 12 hours to, to make a decision. Yeah. This, this, there's two things about this that made social media news recently in the last year. One is that they'll double your ransom every three hours while you're thinking about it. And they don't tell you about that anywhere in the instructions. No. And the second is they have amazing customer service. They were written up as like the best ransomware customer service in the dark web. They have all these great English-speaking people in the in Eastern Europe. Mm. You click on any of these links. If you've never had to download a Tor browser or bid for Bitcoin to get the data out of hoc, they will teach you how. Okay. And they're so nice about it, you almost forget you're paying ransom. Anyway, back to the story. <laughs> so, um, so what we did basically, remember I said it's a... Uh, Kernel-based drive filter and yeah. virtualization of resources. So at some point, um, ransomware malware is going to try to write back to the disk. Okay. It doesn't matter if it wants to look at something. It doesn't even matter if it wants to encrypt things in memory. What matters is when it tries to make a permanent change to my PC. Okay. And also, you know, I should point out, I virtualize everything in that container that it asks for. The COM interface, the registry keys, the, even the CPU and memory ranges are all predefined around hmm. my out of my container. If the malware uses more resources than I provided it in that container, it just crashes the container and now all your native processes just go run it. So basically the whole threat becomes as volatile as the memory stack itself. Right? And so in here we can take a look at what I did is I presented that that C drive, right? So we don't know you, we don't trust you, right? So this disk been said and then we'll see what you do. And I can take a look in here at my very valuable photos and see this malware has, in fact, it's a different extension every time, but it has encrypted my stuff in the container itself. But as I said, the whole threat is as volatile as the memory stack. If this was a, is it, if, uh, if this was, you know, and I think it's important to point out a lot of malware doesn't go out of its way to show off. Like, it's a big colorful notice we got you. Yeah. You know, a lot of malware wants to sit there in the key loggers, screen scrapers, and all. They want to sit in the background. Mm -hmm. Now, if they were contained, because the only way they could have run or done anything here, would, you know, would be to be unknown, and they'd end up in containment. They could be in a container that's not visual like this. And, you know, Sam from accounting who hasn't rebooted his PC in three months might not reboot it for two more months. The whole time that malware could be sitting there, have no visibility, no ability to do any damage, no ability to make network calls out, anything. Hmm. And in two months he reboots his PC and he was completely oblivious to the attack the whole time. It just He rebuilds his memory stack and the, and the attack's gone. So same thing with this ransomware. It thinks it's got me. It actually has encrypted my files, but it's all in the memory that I've defined. And so I could reboot a little quicker. We have a reset button okay. so that we can uh, show you for the demo. But you can see I'm in complete control of that pretty sophisticated malware. Wow. It's like the infection never really occurred. And when I go back to my pictures here, you'll see in real time. Still there. wall is totally safe, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so that's two, two clicks. Two clicks. Two clicks. Two clicks. Get rid of the ransom tab, ransomware tab. Right, and of course I could have just reboot, right? Which is more, which is what ends up happening to the oblivious user almost all the time. That's how they really clear their threats without even knowing it. They don't need the knowledge, so your end users don't have to be. You know, the containment event with the green border is so rare um, that it might be worth letting people know. But it's you know it happens very rarely because things get you know there's all these other layers. There's, there's firewall, there's antivirus, there's a behavioral engine, there's a file lookup service for known good and bad. And so the end user sees the green border around the active window. Do you get notification on the back end like if I have yeah. security analyst? Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you the management console here, and I can show you how that works too. Great. So that's exactly right. And so you can set so the. The, the, you know, the containment, it's not a constant uh, babysitting job, though, you know, because hmm. this stuff auto protects, basically. So oh, okay. It's auto protecting, right? So whether somebody knows what's going on or not, it's not letting you get infected, even if you're trying to infect the machine. In fact, that was the first two months of my job. They gave me this PC. 
They loaded, they showed me how to load up the software. They say, you know where the malware sites are. Go see if you can infect this thing. <laughs> no, I could not. So, uh, I know that's not true. I did figure out a way to do it. If you get a piece of malware that asks for, ask for root privileges and you yeah. say yes enough times, you can let it infect your machine. So oh, you've got to make a lot of bad decisions. Yeah. But it is possible. Um, anyway, so... <laughs> So we spin up um, the management console on AWS. And again, it's a service. It's included in the basic price. You don't pay extra for that. For that. You don't see. But that's the beauty of this is it's all because it's all uh, HTML based, right? I can be, you know, in a restaurant. You have a call. I need to make a change to a policy or, you know, clear a container or check a containment event. I can do it all from my phone. Hmm. So security subsystems are where we'll aggregate the, the uh, enterprises events. Like that, a containment event that just occurred. You can set up alerts for anything you want. You know, alerts that go to a group, alerts that go to individuals. Uh, we're, I'm working with the Wi-Fi here, so it's still a web app, right? Um, so, uh, security subsystems, containment. It's like you have a few notifications. Uh, got 86 notifications. Yeah, so... Yes, we can take a look. Most of those are gone. <laughs> it's okay. You know, it's a good thing to look at. So we re- we make monthly re- uh, feature releases. Oh, okay. And so the, you get news there and then notifications um, are just, as you can see, there's just monitoring, reports that were created, some very basic things. So there's, these aren't alerts or anything. Right, right, right. Um, oh, I'm going too far back. Yeah. Right. Containment event. So here's what I wanted to show you. So it's easy to deploy. I can walk through the deployment. Obviously, there's uh, some steps to that. It'll take a little more time. But in the, the, the link between an attack and managing the event that occurs, right? And then how, and then collecting data and other things. So we see that we, we've sold this to some very large companies, but we're really seeing it great in the mid market. We're putting all this stuff together across millions of bucks, you know, and yeah. people don't get to do that in, in the mid market. So they just don't have the tools. But here you can see the cryptic event. I could use a filter. Yeah. If there's, you know, if it was buried somewhere, the file name, hash, or path I can use to search for it to find it, right? So I find my uh, piece of malware. You know, you got an analyst who says, hey, what, what was that all about? What happened there? You check the Valkyrie details, and it links you to Valkyrie. This is back to the cloud. This is the details of that breeze analysis. So what we do basically, we contain it, and then we look it up. Have you recently seen this to, to Valkyrie? Yeah. Right? And Valkyrie says, no, I haven't seen that one before. Send me the sample. Hmm. So the ex- executable will actually get sent from your endpoint out to the cloud, where we'll do a full static and dynamic code analysis, right? What does the code say it's going to do? What's it do? We're going to actually try to run it. We are algorithms, again, you know, to try to predict the probability of malware there. And then ultimately, um, you know, if it's... Uh, you know, all of these machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, algorithms still produce some unknowns. So what's different about our services, we will automatically cue that, that unknown to a soft engineer. For our SLA, he's going to reverse engineer it and determine if it's good or bad right now. And so if this is a false positive, if it's your little warehouse application written in .NET that nobody signed, mm-hmm. we'd figure it out. We'd become an adaptive whitelisting technology. You don't have to manually do that. So we'll inject that good burden. If it's bad, obviously we protect the patient too. If you have an incident with real malware like this and you want more detail on what kind of malware, we give you a full malware analysis here. So this is just the summary page. But as you can see, we classify the malware, the components, the kind of hooks and high-level behavior distribution uh, that it does. Um, and then we get deeper and deeper into the details, like the uh, the behavior graphs, there's your process IDs and timing of the attack as it occurs. So we'll show you like the parent process that may have launched it. Yep. Yeah, but then you can look, you know, you can look deeper into, you can see the path of those calls as well. Special, suspicious call detail. So, and each of, each of the process IDs, so that will help you line up with local logs and so on. And what we're, we've done, of course, is we, not, we didn't just upload the sample. We uploaded the sample and all the associated metadata of, of, of its running context, right? So we end up with just about everything. So we've got not just this, every IP um, and port that this attack touched, where in the world it's been. Hmm. You know? And uh, detailed file info will show you a custom projection. And then basically, you know, when you want to attach it to the incident, you click on the download the kill chain report button, 
It's going to take a minute. It takes about 10 seconds or like a long network, but you know, here it's a little saturated. It might take a minute. But this is going to produce a 413 page report. Every indicator of compromise associated with that one piece of malware. Wow. So all the details are gathered there. You know? So basically, whatever has that malware on it, it's going to pop up. The malware, but every file that was changed or dropped, every network port and IP, as I showed you, the process IDs. The, you know, I, I kind of skip. So some of these I skip because they take so much time to project. So if I gotcha. click on detailed file info, this is take going to the database, finding all the files, and going to project all the unique hashes. So it, mm -hmm. you'll see that it takes a moment or two to project as well and click on it there. But the report's got all the same exact detail. So if I go down a little bit, you'll see what I'm talking about here. With the, you know, anything that was changed or dropped, we get multiple, we get uh, multiple hashes. So if you want to do, you know, any hunting and pecking just to make sure you're not infected somewhere else, you can do that as well. Yeah. Um, so it closes the loop on everything. So as I said, it's a unique protection method. This all comes right out of the box. And then I didn't even show you that how much extra you get. You know, I'm just showing you the protection path. Yeah. But in the end, you get a lot with this stuff. You get complete group policy management. So you know all, all the policies can be changed slightly for different groups that have different needs. Okay. There's multiple tenancy built in. A lot of people just push. Well, I see the one plus. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a one plus right there. We got um, yeah. Oh, well, it's an MDM, so we support full Android, oh, iOS, okay. OS X, and even Linux servers. Or, or, we have agents for Linux servers. Full remote control. Just get the agent out there, and you've got remote control capabilities. Procedures. Something that you know, again, mid-market resonation, right? So we, procedures. We give you a whole library of, 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 based, of Python scripts to automate and script anything you want to do. So a lot of customers will use this for migration. So we put our agent out on your system, and you got that, and we'll run a script to remove the competing product and install ours. So we can automate the migration with you too. We do guided installs. It's full, full uh, service all the time. And the list price is $39 a year. All of this. Just no extras. $39 for one year. Yeah. Right. You get all of it for that. So you think about you competing with the only ones that really have the whole loop like this. Mm -hmm. You know, probably, you know, there's a couple, but I would say Semantic McAfee are your two biggest competitors. Okay. And you're talking 100 plus per endpoint. Right. We need five big servers on your infrastructure. We're going to carry the security messages because the goal is to right. take that first known bad, socialize it to everything else, and protect. Right. We're doing that through Valkyrie. We also have a gateway that uses that for that container. So if you try, if you uh, inadvertently download a piece of malware and then uh, try, you know, but it's an unknown. So it's, we we do it a cloud scan when you try to download something anyway. So we're checking Valkyrie and saying, oh, that's bad, delete it. But if it's not, you know, if it's an unknown and we download it, just like a virus would, we look at it and say, we don't know you. We're going to wrap you up, and we're going to wrap you in the container. So now you download it, you email it to someone that's had no protection on their PC, and they open it, and it opens up container for the report. They can't, you can't infect it. So you can't propagate the infection through the gateway either. Um, so that's... Uh, so the gateway works, you know, with that same technology, but just on the endpoint, as you can see, you get a ton of stuff, you get all these tools, um, and, um, and then, you know, this, this Komodo One platform, I've actually got basically every product we have here, the DNS Shield, the uh, Golden Shield DNS, is the data loss prevention solution, the and scan gateway, you know, the secure web gateway, and, you know, basically from the one platform, I can click on any of these products. And, you know, go to the other support products. So there are other vendors that are kind of in this space that they, in addition to these these applications and these services, they also offer like a response. So, you know, an additional cost. So they'll respond to an incident with, you know, a live person. Okay. Yep. Whatever means they use to connect back into the network or locally or whatever. So is that something that is offered? Well, so, um, so we do have another product, so SIM and um, SOC services essentially is where you go with that. So we have a product called SeaWatch, where we'll do full data packet capture in the data center. Uh, it'll, you know, when you can push all your logs to it, it'll take that data and normalize it, and it'll, it'll, it'll trickle it out to the cloud where our software engineers will see it. So you get the same dashboard, we customize it with each customer. And then in terms, so a lot of it's about visibility and remediation steps, right? So obviously we're remote in that scenario. So there's only so much you can do as a mediation. But we, we do have customers that use like Phantom for all this or orchestration that you know have automated some remediation scan this, isolate that, 